What's up? This is Obi Talk One Two Three here. Um, a lot of things going on. Um, you know, obviously, the U Darvish signing was big, making the West an interesting division. But the Nationals could make it a very interesting division in the East if they do sign Prince Fielder. Do I think they're going to be the favorite? Not ready to call them the favorites in the East if they sign Prince Fielder, but definitely improving with Gio Gonzalez and Prince Fielder. That's a fantastic offense for any team. Uh, not an offense, off season for any team. So, you know, what is their next order of business? How are they going to fill out this outfield? How are they going to have some backup at first base? How are they going to have that depth? And how are they going to keep Michael Morris around in Washington? Because we all know we can't just count on Adam Roach to play first base, especially if they don't find sign fielding. Okay, well, if Adam Roach is still hurt, who's going to play first base? You have a guy like Michael Morris hit 30-plus home runs last year. Why wouldn't you need him? Uh, so you see Michael Morris, and for some people, he's definitely come as a surprise. But for others, if you are, you know, are a Nationals fan, you should have known about this guy. In 2010, he had 15 home runs. He got his foot in the door. In limited at bats, he had a you know a high on base percentage, a high batting average, and then he has 15 home runs, drives in some runs there. So you know you should know about him, and you know that he's definitely a breakout candidate. He reminds me of the Ryan Ludwig situation. He had 14 home runs and pretty limited at bats with the Cardinals. I believe it was maybe that was probably 2007. And then the next year, he comes out and hits like 30 home runs, gets more playing time. That's exactly what happened with Michael Morse. And the fact is, he, he's pretty much played a few seasons in Seattle and then goes to Washington unnoticed. I mean, I didn't know who this guy was until 2010. I saw, okay, his numbers are getting better. He was someone who was producing. I saw his highlights in baseball tonight. You know, those type of things. You start to see a uh, repetitive nature. You're like, okay, who is this guy, Michael Morse? All right, and then 2011, he was definitely a breakout candidate. He comes in there, hits over 30 home runs drives in a bunch of runs, and really was one of the most important pieces in this Washington Nationals offense. The fact that they went without Adam LaRoche all season, they had to deal with Ryan Zimmer being, being hurt, and they had to deal with Jason Worth underperforming uh, to a point where it's just frustrating. You know I mean? I'm not even a Nationals fan, but after signing that huge contract, you need him. Uh, the pressure's definitely on. He's got to hit at least 25 home runs, and I think he will improve. Uh, definitely a comfort level he had to get used to, but I hope he improves. I know Cincinnati Bank Park is a great place to play um, offensively, and you know he's got to hit better than that though. And and it could go down as just you know the top ten worst deals of all time, maybe even top five if he keeps hitting like he is. Um, but he's still valuable defensively and base running wise. But you got to get the numbers up. He's got to be an important piece of this offense for years to come. He's got to be there with Bryce Harper. He's got to be there with Michael Morris in the future. He's got to be there if they sign Prince Fielder. I mean, this team has a lot of offensive uh, keys for them. And Ryan Zimmerman, they're working on extension. So to get him, uh, Michael Morris, for this extension, they're going to be saving some money and definitely an important piece for 2012. So let's look at it, the money aspect. Here, arbitration, he wanted $5 million. They counted out like 3.75. Now, if they meet somewhere in the middle, let's just, you know, pretend they meet at like 4.5. All right, so you're paying him 4.5 for this year, and then if he has the type of year in 2012 that he had in 2011, that not only makes him so much more valuable, his arbitration could go up to maybe something around $8 million, and then you're looking at a total salary of those two years at $12 million, $12.5 million. Instead, they're saving $2 million in the process by doing this if he has a good year. That's not really taking a risk, though, because I don't see his salary declining that much. And I don't see a guy like Michael Morse with the proven ability uh, in 2012 to have a, you know, a terrible season. He has the talent. He's developed into the power hitter that you know he showed that he could be in 2010. And in 2011, he had those numbers that showed that. So it's a good sign for the Nationals getting for the next two years, adding some depth there. Good move.